Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I was reading about khalwa, seclusion in your book, Levels of the Heart. Yes. What, what practical things can we do to enter seclusion while in everyday life? The meditation. The, if you, the, the meditation book, is that's all it's about, is that train yourself for seclusion. Whatever time you're coming home, is that, Ya Rabbi, I'm, I'm making intention for seclusion. And also from what Shaykh Dagestani has given us for recitation, it's in the book also. Nawat al-Arba'een, Nawat al-Ittakaf, Nawat al make I'm making intention to seclude. As soon as we say that intention, then Shaykh Dagestani, Sultanul Awliya described that from the time you make that intention to the time your ibadah is finished, that will count towards your 40 days that every soul is required to make of seclusion on this earth. So imagine you're doing that for 10 years, you've well passed you know 40 days and then the ones whom every day they come home and they say, okay let's say I'm coming home right after Asr, I'm going to seclude myself for 20 minutes, 30 minutes and wash and meditate and connect my heart and you discipline yourself every day to have a discipline in which you connect and make your connection until you can make the connection. At that time once you've made the connection then it becomes very easy. At the end of every salah you connect your heart, you connect the heart with the shaykh and ask for the fires and that satellite to be dressing and reflecting onto the heart. And after work if it's quiet you do that at fajr time, if nobody's up you spend some time at fajr every day connecting your heart. And it's a discipline for the people whom they're sort of rigid in their discipline and they continue and continue and continue because they want the light of that satellite. They want that reflection of Prophet to become to dress them and to bless them. And they, they can't imagine a life without that and just the coldness of the physical world. So it's a matter of how much you put into it is what you'll get out of it. And the, the people whom are farthest away have the most potential. Don't ever think that, oh I'm handicapped, I'm not there, I have to come run to sit in the shaykh's presence. No, it's the people whom are farthest away have the most ability because Allah put within their heart a zeal, a yearning. That's why when we visit Medina your visit should be short with the best of manners and get out. Otherwise you stay too long you find it's becoming commonplace to you. Oh I'll do this today, maybe I won't do that, maybe I won't. And then before you know it you're becoming too familiarized with the Rosa Sharif and not keeping the adab and the manners. So nine days, ten days so that you can do your 40 prayers and, and you're supposed to leave. You don't spend months there then you lose your adab and lose that respect. So anything that becomes rare for the person they cherish it, they respect it and they learn how to connect to it. So alhamdulillah this is a, is a great gift by Allah Anyone who has a zeal and a yearning, so I just want so much to connect with them, alhamdulillah. They get a taweez and they think it's the fantastic, they have all their heart and their belief in it and Allah make it to be powerful. So if the emails that are coming in and the comments that are on YouTube, people are having very powerful experiences because they're in need. People are under immense attack, immense attack and emails that, oh I went here, here nothing happened, I got Shaykh Nazim's taweez and boom it was instant, nothing, nothing was coming near me. No, because they have faith and these, these shaykhs are very powerful and with that faith and with that love they put that everything should be taken away. And then they ask you to meditate and connect means they're giving you a key that this access to Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, the, the silsila to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi is giving you a key to connect with them and, and you're choosing not to, well then you're accountable to Allah for whatever comes in your life and you made your bed, you live with it. But if you do use it 
and you find that it's immensely powerful, m immensely powerful against black magic, nefarious entities and everything that's opening upon this earth and the people who use it they know its power and, and its ability inshaAllah. And the ones who don't inshaAllah they'll be inspired to, to cherish it and use what Allah has given. Tariqah is a key, you grab that key and start going in and make it your whole life's calling because it's just uh, so many keys that are available. When they don't use it they usually lose it. So in life something that you didn't cherish, oh I don't know where I put it, I, uh, I put it in a drawer but it kind of vanished and that's, that's everything in life. When you don't use it most likely Allah will take the key away and the person loses it. And so where's that person they're not logging on anymore, yeah. That's you know whatever is written. But the ones whom are using and actively involved and actively participating and trying their best to reach, they never lose their key inshaAllah because they're actively using it every day. They even have a key tied around on a rope with on their neck. You just hide it and put it away, nothing happens inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there any reality if a mirror or glass breaking? and it meaning that something bad has passed you and went into that broken item? Everything is an energy. So any type of negative energy is better to be cast upon something else other than yourself. So imagine if energies were like bullets and somebody was firing at you and immediately you went like this, you were inspired to put a shield up and that bullet went and hit the window. So energies are like bullets and arrows that are being fired at people. So definitely when things break and things happen and, and it can be many, many things and these are usually energies. So there have been people who you know, they go with a very positive energy and many positive energy beings around them and they go into an environment that is very negative and everything starts to break. So this, this is the, the world of energy and uh, alhamdulillah those who keep their taweez, they do their madad, they ask for support, they do the practices from the Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah way, they are surrounded by many, many <coughs> mu'min beings as a security for them. So alhamdulillah they're in the business of deflecting negativity inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What happens if a non-Naqshbandi tries to connect to a Naqshbandi shaykh through muraqabah if he has been given, if he's not been given bayah to from the shaykh? Yeah, they alhamdulillah anyone with the intention to connect then Allah open for them a means in which to connect. The bayat is for the nafs of the student. So remember that this system is not based on your cleverness that you decided to like us and say, oh, okay now I'm accepting you, you're going to be my shaykh. No, if you think the world was like that the tariqah wouldn't be able to operate. You're already been determined from the heavens and that you're sitting in the association of those shaykhs in the malakut, in the world of light. Only by the permission of the world of light are you even capable of hearing these talks. So even if you stop for five minutes to listen means that your soul was already being taught by the shaykhs. So there's no way for you to come into their presence to listen to these talks had you not been in their association and under their tarbiyah. And it's just a matter of time when your body also agrees, your nafs agrees that, yes yeah, this is my shaykh. So I'm sitting with them, listening to them, everything he's saying is vibrating to me. And many people are stole, stolen from false people that an energy was supposed to be coming to that person to direct them and then somebody tried to deviate them, oh don't go to them, come to me, I'll help you. So you know, Allah save those people from all the deviation and the obstacle courses that the dunya has. And then if they consistently meditate and contemplate 
Alhamdulillah they keep the zikr, keep the presence of the zikr, keep the associations, practice the learnings and the, the sobats and alhamdulillah. And in their own they can go to the website and begin to recite the bayat that, Ya Rabbi I pledge my allegiance and to your way, to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and to the dhawq and I want to take the taste of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya. The allegiance is to Allah and Islam. We said that there is no Islam without bayat. We gave those talks before that the Islam is reality is only through the bayat that you pledge your allegiance to Allah and to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that you obey the Holy Qur'an and that I want to take from the taste and the flavour of my shaykhs and I accept them as my shaykhs in the way. So that, that then you make and recite that uh, bayat and alhamdulillah that locks the soul and the student and they know the allegiance that they made and the heart uh, of what is connected and their love is for Sayyidina Muhammad and the shaykhs inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Before this association I was under another shaykh, people from that association come and invite me to join events. What do I say to them? Say, thank you very much. What, what can you say? Because you, you say, thank you very much, I, I'll try my best and uh, inshaAllah, inshaAllah and whatever you can do, inshaAllah. Because it's, it gets confusing if you go and some people are, are too aggressive and, okay, oh, we're going to do buy it again and we're going to do like this and before you know it the, there's so much conflict. So the, the events and social events like you know if it's just for something social and they want to be and hang out with people then alhamdulillah. But if it's going to be a, a place where then the, there's going to be talks and, and, and bayat and all sorts of uh, issues of, of their allegiance and those then become pretty difficult and alhamdulillah we were always fed sufficiently so we didn't need to eat anywhere else. So if you have food at home then you don't need to look at other people's dining tables to get some scraps. So when the shaykh is feeding the student with knowledges and realities they're fed. So then why would you sit somewhere else to eat? So that becomes the danger and we always had a concern to keep our heart connected and to be vigilant over our heart. So that not to make any type of connection or any difficulty with my own connection. And that had to do with the ocean of loyalty and, and respect and alhamdulillah. So it has its own inner discipline and reality and we socialize with other people that was not a problem. But when it becomes a formal association and the shaykh is going to be and a guided shaykh is going to be then we, we have to sort of be a little bit vigilant and uh, sort of balance the situation inshaAllah. We've had events where we were with Maulana and other shaykhs were trying to take us. So that has to be very careful and, and sort of you know vigilant on, on oneself and show their allegiance and, and their respect and never deal with people privately and, and it, it's a whole way of honour and respect inshaAllah. So that uh, Prophet sees our allegiance and that these people are disciplined and they're honoured people and they keep to their loyalty and to their honour inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amin yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.